government and governments talking to people, MPs, just average average Britons all over the UK and uh, much outside of, of the United Kingdom. What we are trying to do to tell you the truth, and you, you, you don't have to do much because your people in Ukraine right now are doing a very courageous job going all the places and seeing and reporting what they actually see. We will be able to discuss with you and uh, talk about the, whatever the questions you have, but just to kickstart our today's conversation, we don't believe that this is operation, uh, the special operation which Putin calls it. We see that it's full-scale attack against us. The uh, idea he has, and he described it, to denazify, whatever, the, the, to take the Nazis from Ukraine, this is an attack against us, against Ukrainians. We don't want to be freed from anybody. We are on our land. We are, we are, we are not provoking him, neither our, our neighbors. One of these neighbors just betrayed us, that's Belarus. We've seen attacks from their, from their territory. We've seen the cruise missiles coming from there. We see tanks rolling over our border with Belarus. This is something very unexpected. We knew how bad the, 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 the dictator, but we didn't expect that Belarusians will betray us as a nation, as a, as a friendly nation on our north. Russians came from all four sides. They are taking, they are trying to take all of our territory. They are taking a couple of towns. We see uh, people being killed, both civilians and military personnel. We don't have the exact number, but the number you, you see on the Ukrainian Ukrainian media and your media reporting from Ukraine are correct. We can we can report of those. You can actually check our uh, headquarters of Ukrainian armed forces to see the the losses. But we put in up a real fight. We are trying to get as many Russians to another world as possible as well. Tanks, helicopters, planes being shot down. We are defending our land. Unfortunately, some of, of the places are very difficult to defend. They are now block the whole sea. We can have access to the Black Sea and Sea of Azov. They started it and blocked it and formally explained it as anti-terrorist terrorist attack in the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov, which, you know, limiting our capabilities of bringing the reinforcement or even the supplies. One of the supplies we will need quite soon, quite critically, there is, there is not just military supplies, but humanitarian supplies, the fuels, because they are targeting specifically fuel depots and, and the infrastructure, critical infrastructure, dams, bridges. Now they, they try it and at the process we are fighting over the airfield of Antonov Air Design Bureau, which is 15 minutes, 20 minutes from Kiev, civilian airport belonging to Antonov Air Company. So that's more or less the situation right now on the ground. I'm more than happy to talk to you and have your specific questions. Thank you. And is this kind news? Can I just ask you, um, uh, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he is going to announce some tougher sanctions later today. What specific sanctions do you want to see? And are you disappointed that the SWIFT banking system hasn't come into play? I prepared for each and every one of you. I'll give it to you. This is the, the list of sanctions. In the financial sphere only, you will have it uh, by the end of this conversation. But the, the SWIFT is here as well. We want SWIFT, we want the Russian Central Bank to be sanctioned. We have a list of very heavy sanctions. We believe that these sanctions, if they are introduced, will seriously, will have Putin seriously to reconsider his, his, what he is doing. But it seems that SWIFT is not going to be introduced. As of now, concerned. we don't see it. I know that it was discussed. It was referred as, as very grave and uh, hellish sanctions. But for many reasons, uh, it's not, they are not introduced yet. I hope that after our conversations with, with the UK, we'll, we will see how the new sanctions are updated. I just have another question, which is, uh, you are facing one of the most powerful armies in the world. Do you actually need military support in terms of boots on the ground to be able to stand any chance to repel this attack? At this particular moment, we have enough people who don't have enough equipment. So but yes, but we were we were quite open. Uh, I myself was quite open, telling that at the particular time when our existence as a nation, as 40 million nation, would come to to real question, we will ask everything on top of equipment, support, financial support, fuels, humanitarian aid, everything we've been already discussing. Uh, Greg McKenzie from BBC News. Um, in terms of uh, the British government and the wider community, you kind of answered it just there. What more do you want to see in terms of? Uh, this uh, coming to an end? We wanted something which only NATO can provide. We wanted no-fly zone over Ukraine. 
This is very serious, very professional military talk, which we have to have with your people, with the rest of NATO allies. It is very serious, dramatic move. Uh, I am not pre sort of pre telling right now what would be uh, what would come as a result of this conversation, but this is radical conversation. We'll have to talk. Everything else we are discussing right now. Our ministers of defense will will talk in around four or five hours. We will just hand it over the request of some particular equipment. We are using, by the way, those equipment which was provided by you and loves were used today, by Raktars were used today to destroy our Russian Russian tanks and, and armored vehicles. And do you think he can be stopped in We hope, all of us hope, that he will be stopped. The, the losses are already unbearable, at least for us. Maybe he can survive these losses. Maybe his, his society is not prepared, you know, like ourselves, you know, to cherish each and every life. For us, it's very painful. And just lastly, um, in terms of you being here and, and not in Ukraine and, and the future for you, maybe the possibility that you might never be able to go back, how does that feel? We have not been considering. We have our old, we, we, we had the meeting today with the embassy because all of us have their families back. The parents, the, the brothers, sisters, it's very painful for us. At the same time, we know how many of your nationals are in Ukraine right now. We are in consultation, consultation with your governments, how to get these people out, how to help those, those uh, citizens, and even the Ukrainian citizens who are members of the family. So this is a very painful and very difficult conversation we have to have right now to find out how we can help them. Don't forget that uh, the sky is closed. We did it because we want to avoid any, any danger to any commercial flights of any nations. Remember MH17, how they've been shot down by the separatists over our territory, but in controlled sphere of it. We wanted to avoid this. We now have to understand how we can actually get people in and out. The sea is blocked. We have only, it's the, that's the west, western borders of Ukraine, land, land bridge. And Ambassador, are you expecting any more escalation in Kiev itself? 15 minutes from Kiev, this airport, if they take over this airport, they will use it for the, for the paratroopers to, and heavy ammunition, heavy tanks to get, because to, to, from, the, from the border by land, you will have to cross 100 kilometers of well-defended well roads and, and the fields. And the Ukrainians are fighting right now. They are close to Kharkiv, which is the second biggest city. They took a couple of smaller towns in the south of Ukraine. They came from Crimea, where they stationed because we allowed them in 1991 to stay until 2017. We always knew that we have to get rid of them because the sooner or later we'll, they will use these bases. Now they're using against us. They're coming into thousand, thousand uh, parts of the Ukrainian mainland, trying probably to secure this water, water channel, which is coming from major, major Ukrainian river Dnipro, which used to supply Crimea when Crimea was part of the Ukrainian territory. So you are expecting Russian ground forces, if they can manage, you are expecting them in the capital in Kiev? We, we talked with our government, with our ministers, and the situation in Kiev as well. This, the groups of saboteurs, we, we, the, 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 even the police, the internal forces, the National Guard, it's not just for the armed forces, they're fighting with them now. And can I just ask you, in the run-up to this, um, your president had a very calm tone, he was, as you all understand, trying to stoke too much panic, but it seems that most Ukrainians really didn't expect this huge scale of the attack. Were you prepared enough as, as a country, as a government? Did this come as a bit of a surprise maybe even for you, the scale of it? Some Ukrainians believe that we would be much better prepared if we did not allow our nuclear weapons to be transferred to, Ukraine, to Russia in 1994 in exchange of guarantees, which are not obviously not working. They, they failed to prevent, to, to you know, to divert this, this attack which is happening right now. The rest of the Ukrainians believe that we'll be living in a, in, a, in a marriage within the Soviet Union, if you want me to put this way, for, for so many years that they wouldn't come to kill their brothers and sisters. We have so many uh, family contacts, so many business contacts, cultural contacts. That's why Ukrainians could not even, you know, wrap their head around this, how it can actually happen. Zelensky, the president himself, he lived in, in Moscow. He was mentioned for a couple of times for 10 years working there. So for many Ukrainians, it's unthinkable. So it's fair to say that for a lot of the Ukrainian population, just the sheer scale of the attack came as a bit of a surprise. And the, and the scale, although we were talking to you, talking to most of the, and I had the privilege to talk, we were discussing most of the ways, and most of the ways we, we sort of foresaw at that time were now happening like they're coming through the excursion zone of, of, uh, of Chernobyl.
this zone is not protected because there is radiation, nobody lives there. They now came through this particular unprotected part of our borders through Belarusian territory. So everything is happening as we, as, we, as we saw it before. And just also want to ask you, do you think that President Zelensky and the rest of the government took the uh, intelligence warnings from the US and UK side seriously in the run-up to the crisis when they were saying that they do expect a large-scale invasion to happen? Being today, where I am now and where we all of us now, we can say that we should have started much earlier, uh, maybe decades ago, to, to, you know, to invest more in our army, to prepare ourselves. Not many people in Ukraine believed that we had. That's why we were actually trying to get into NATO all these years, because we always believed that they would come. But you know when it, how real it is, when there's a difference between what you do as a political figure, as a political person, and what you're actually preparing your nation to sacrifice to defend ourselves. We had probably to divert more of our budget, and it's not huge. For the army, you know, we had to increase the number of people to be able to defend. But the war is not over. We are, we are fighting right now. People are dying as we speak. Я вам передам зараз ці ці. Ви побачите. We are talking about what what you what what we expect to be done in Ukraine for Ukrainian public as well. Припинити операції в, руб... в російському рублі, санкціонувати Центральний банк Росії, прикрити SWIFT, відключити від віза і MasterCard, всі рахунки за кордоном, які належать русським громадянам, викинути звідси олігархів, які знаходяться в Лондоні, в цій в системі фінансовій. Це багато-багато заходів, які зробляться. We will again, we will hand over all of it, that's enough copies for each and every one of you. I will, okay, absolutely. I will do it. The ban energy trade with Russia. This is very painful. Understand, it won't be easier for many nations, uh, but that's something which we believe to have the most of the effect. The ban for investments in Russia prohibit Western governments' pension funds from investing in Russian assets. Sanction secondary trading of Russian debts and equities. Sanction Russian central bank. We believe that something even harder than than SWIFT. The SWIFT is also here. The withdraw Russia out of bond and equity investment indexes. Uh, disconnect Russia from Visa and MasterCard, freeze foreign Russian assets, sanction Russian direct investments funds, and expect and expand personal sanctions to all those in Western lists of sanctions and their families, freeze of assets, visa cancellation, passport revocation, and repatriation back to Russia. That's the whole list. You will have the copy each and every one of them. And will that list be enough to, to stop Vladimir Putin? Continuing this? I would be happy to see uh, NATO forces on our land to, you know, to be able really to, st to stop them. We have to fight ourselves. We are doing it right now. We'll see how these sanctions, if they are introduced, what effect they will have. But you would like to see NATO forces go into Ukraine? Me personally, yes. I was Ukrainian ambassador to NATO. I understand that the only this force exists in our part of the globe who can match the, the mighty Red Army. Just one more question. Uh, do you think that the UK needs to be uh, a bit stricter um, for the oligarchs, the Russian oligarchs that are here and that have made a home here that have close ties to Putin's regime? We're one of those nations who can share our own experience how Russian dirty money can corrupt our system. And this money, especially with the gas trade and oil trade, corrupted our system to the bone. That's how most of the Ukrainian oligarchs appeared on, on, on the map of, of uh, an existence. So everybody who touches the money this touches, any system, any banking system, any nation, they will bring this devastation at the end. So the, the London, the Great Britain doesn't have to follow this example. They can learn from our experience that this money, in the most of them just stolen from the, the Russian people, from the Russian, Russian land, from the resources. They actually are corrupting everything they touch. And just finally, if you just say something to Boris Johnson now, what would you say? I hope that I will be able to tell him as soon as we have this initial, and Boris Johnson was talking to President Zelensky today, and he's, he had a call at 5, 5 a.m., if not mistaken. So we, we had this ongoing debate. We are trying to understand what can be done right now, what sort of military assistance, financial assistance can be provided right now, and what is the collective sort of stance of uh, collective response of West could be. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, Ricky Phillip from Talk Radio. Do you see a, a point in time this week where we could see a, a civilian army fighting in the streets of Kiev? 
Kiev is a big city, it's three million, but the Kharkiv next to it is two and a half million. There are a couple of cities and millions. We have Western cities, which, which now they're hosting the most of the embassies and some Ukrainian structures. So Kyiv is important, but Ukrainians will fight for many, many other cities as well. And are you aware of how many Ukrainians have traveled back to Ukraine before the, the, the flying uh, ban came in? How many, have, how many have flown back to fight? We don't, we don't know the exact number because many flights were cancelled. Ukrainian airlines were flying to the very end, but many uh, airlines from the civilized nations, like Kamel, Lufthansa, they cancelled days, days before. So we, we don't understand how many of them were, 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 were managed to, to get into. I can tell you that, for example, my minister couldn't get in Ukraine. He was flying from Washington and New York where he had all the meetings and Security Council meetings. He could not get into Ukraine. Now he is going by land landed in one of the European cities. So this, there is no exact number. I can tell you that we have 20 million people around the globe as Ukrainian community, and we will, we will call upon them to support Ukraine right now when we need it. We have 40 million nations and with the 20 million Ukrainians abroad. And, and how many casualties would be too many? At what point would you ever get in? We are quite resilient people. We've been through artificial famine, we've been through Chernobyl, we've been, we suffered a lot after the Second World War, and within all the wars. This land sometimes called the bloodlands of Europe, so people suffer for all their existence. They are quite resilient, they know how to fight, unfortunately, they also know history of being dying too. Peter Media, um, what do you think uh, Putin's endgame is? I believe that he wanted to get Soviet Union back, and for this he won't stop at anything. Now he has Kazakhstan and Belarus. By the way, two more nations which signed the Budapest Memorandum, giving up the nuclear weapons, which ended up in their territory when Soviet Union collapsed. Now all of this uh, promise has been, been broken, and not, Russia is now getting, getting to these nations back to get them onto the new project. I don't even know how Putin wants to call it. In his recent remarks, he was messing up the Russian monarchy, Russian Empire, Soviet Union, that's the same, more or less the same for him. It's also the same for us. We also consider it as a Russia, just in different projects. Whatever the new project will be called, we don't know, but we understand that the same Russia is getting back and trying to get this territory of Slavic, Slavic tribes, and he believes for some, some his personal reason, and you probably heard this amateurish lesson of history, that how he seen, how he hated us, calling us a historic mistake which has to be fixed. I'm uh, disappointed with many Western leaders. I'm not disappointed with the response I'm receiving here. And not from just government, but also I had, I had today a chance to talk to the leaders of opposition parties. At least two just, just, just ended up. And this is a very unique moment when having all the differences, and we're observing as diplomats all the difference in political, political differences here, but they all united in supporting Ukraine. That's what we see, and that's what they're talking again. They're, they're recognizing that this is a unique moment when the whole politicum of of United Kingdom is united behind this, you know, support to Ukraine. What more do you think Boris Johnson needs to be doing at this point to ensure that these arrests are occurring beyond sanctions? I believe that uh, what is uh, dramatically needed is co co coordination. We are coordinating on very high level. Our leaders are talking to each other, and by the day, by the end of the day today, our ministers, both ministers of defense and foreign affairs, will talk to both ministers of defense and, and foreign affairs, and they will be able to create. I, I, I need personally, as ambassador here, more coordination on a sort of level of tac tactical level. Right now, right here, through this embassy. That's because we, we, we receive all the requests we need right now, and you know some, some, something is needed from your side, like this British nationals, to be able to be evacuated, what the channels, how we can get humanitarian aid in Ukraine. All these things have to be re resolved right now, right away. That's where we can actually really ramp up the, the cooperation. Ambassador Skrani, you began. Um, how long can Ukraine sustain a conflict financially, militarily? At, at war, last war, Ukraine was totally occupied by, by Nazis. We never stopped the, the guerrilla war. Our partisans were operating all this long five years. I don't know how long Ukrainians will have to suffer again, 
but real uh, people are really motivated, you know, to, to, to fight to the last one of us. And over these eight years, this is not something new to us. We already lost by this day 13,500 people. I, I'm, I'm just scared to, to, to consider what the new number is, you know, to see it. But Ukrainians were fighting. We, we have so many people went through it, both men and women. Where war is not discriminating in our case. So 500 veterans are already, we have lines of people uh, to, to sign up for the army. And in the, in the supermarkets, you can see that the shelves with the, with the bread are full, but in the, in the hunting uh, uh, supermarkets, we, 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 scare, we, we don't see any, any bullets, any, any cartridges. People are taking this first. They are, they are preparing to, to fight to the very end. We will see how we can avoid this. You know, nobody, wants, nobody wants to have it on our soil. We don't want to kill Russians. They come to our place. We didn't provoke them. We, are not, we didn't want anything at all, even their gas. We don't need anything from them. And just on the supply issue, with the sea route blocked and the western route being the only available one, how jeopardizes that route from shelling and, and from other Russian forces? That's what we will have to provide talking to our western, western partners. And we are already doing mostly with our Polish friends. And this is friendly nation, our neighbor and our just, you know, same tribes talking almost the same language. It's easier to understand. And this nation was suffering from Russia, Russian occupation invasions through all our history. So we know with whom we, to whom we can you know, address our and we know who will be able to, you know, to stand with us. What do, they need, what do you need them to do? We need them to provide to help us to, to secure this corridor. To to provide? They will do it on their side anyways. They're scared because Russians are getting getting closer to them. They are already, Poles are preparing right now as we speak. We're not expecting them to come over our, and help us in our lands, but they will have to reinforce their own borders. That's for sure. And NATO is, is supporting them. Your people, uh, your military personnel in, in Romania, in Estonia, in Poland. But unfortunately, we are not a part of the family. That's the, that's the crazy, craziest thing. Are you frustrated? I spent my professional life trying to get into. Before the Bucharest summit, I was one of those in negotiation team to NATO before 2008. And I was ambassador to NATO. I understand that's the only chance for us to survive. And you know, I'm not blaming anybody. We are to blame first. We should have done better to be now a part of family and expecting that somebody will help us at the time of need. It's not like we want to, to get, get NATO engaged in conflict, but we wanted to, to have the same level of security as your people on the streets are, you know, enjoying. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is the paper. You don't have to take notes. This is papers for you. Thank you. Thank you.